So here's the other part of the Scottish Parliament front part. And there in the back, right there, the mountain, that's Arthur's chair. Where are you from? Belgium. Belgium. So I thought I was, uh, was going to say French because you have that French twang, but yeah. Belgium makes sense too. Yeah, yeah. But Belgium, yeah. You, you can speak German, French, but A Swiss. bit of German, a bit of French, English, yeah. Spanish, because I'm half Spanish. Oh, yeah. And you're from the States? No. no, Ireland, but I'm originally from Canada. Oh. So I got a whole bunch planned for this weekend. The first one was obviously just to get here, show you how to get here. Um, my experience is having to be up for 24 hours to take you here. Now that I'm here, I have a whole bunch of different vlogs planned up. So make sure you uh, hit that bell button to be notified when the uh, vlogs are coming. And don't forget to hit the uh, subscribe button. Uh, it helps grow, grow my channel and the uh, give it a thumbs up that helps with the algorithms so we got a amazing weekend planned for showing you the beauty of what you can see when you go to Edinburgh today we're blessed with the weather like I said it's supposed to be raining the rest of the weekend so we're gonna try to make the most of it today and see what we get up to so oh, stay tuned walk down the bottom of the st. Andrews comes to a nurse square here and then you can see the old buildings there and I want to go take a look at that so we're going to cross over now and we'll see probably get a coffee I uh, will need some inspiration to get going for that and we'll take a look at this building when we get closer to it here's this town map so Scott Monument here's where we are that's the Scott Monument, and we just came from St. Andrews, so we're right here. We're going to walk around, and here's the Royal Mile, so we'll walk around this for a bit, make our way towards the Royal Mile, and don't forget, up here, 12 o'clock, we have an appointment for Edinburgh Castle. So here I am, in front of Scott's Monument. It's all the way up there. So amazing, amazing work. I wonder if the GoPro picks it up. So Sir Walter Scott, Edinburgh lawyer and patriot. So, 1771 to say 1832. Let's go walk inside the garden a bit. And then we'll head towards the mile. Don't forget we have to stop and get a coffee. Scott's Monument and you can see right in the background all oh, Edinburgh Castle on the cliff edge. We're going to be a micro way up there for 1 o'clock so or 12 o'clock and we'll hear the 1 o'clock guns. So now we're just going to walk back down that way and we're going to head over to the Royal Mile. Over. Here's Scott's Monument. We've crossed over that bridge there over the green and now we're going to go up these steps. We're trying to look for the, uh, the Royal Mile to start. Look at these uh, closes. Now those are like alleys, what we would call. They're all over the place. We'll be walking up and down a few of those over the next couple of days. And there's confectionery snacks and milkmen. Hmm. See, doesn't this look beautiful? So, right, this is inside the uh, Waverly uh, train station. Really nice. The reason I jumped into here is I had no choice but uh, to use the washrooms. Now, the place where I had the coffee, it was so tiny. It didn't even have a washroom or at. It just has like a 
couple of places to sit down and that so don't know how they get away with that but at least the uh, train station had one and it wasn't too far so now we'll just head back up and we'll continue on our quest for the Royal Mile so now we're just walking up oh look at this Gurkha authentic Nepalese in Indian cuisine Sorry, we're closed. Too bad. Would have liked some uh, momos or dal bhat if they had any. So now we're just walking up. I don't know if the sun's messing with the uh, GoPro. Look at these closes. Here's one. Craig's close. Look how narrow it is. Goes all the way down. You can find them dotted between the buildings. There's another coffee shop. And we'll be getting to the point where we'll have to switch over the old battery soon. I got plenty of room on the on the uh, memory stick, so we're okay with that. Okay. So this is the Royal Mile we're on. Jeez, that sun is strong. So we're gonna walk down towards the palace and then walk our way back up. something everywhere to look like I'm looking left and right even down at the end there's a spire on top of that building and look at that there's one over there geez everywhere you go there Royal Mile in on the mile Radisson something everywhere This is you're coming to the cross section and down. Look at that building right in the back there. And then the monument. We're at the Royal Mile High Street and Jeffrey Street. And Mary Street. So that's the intersection. And we're gonna keep going down that way. On this side you can see that building right in the back there. It's very neat. <clears throat> and then we keep our way we're working our way down some prints here's Goian's close and they all are just little alleyways that go on to different places and this place Royal Mile gift shop And then we'll keep heading our way down here. And I'll turn it off until I see something that jumps out. There's an interesting old building as we're walking up on it. Tollbooth Tavern. With the clock tower. Look it up there. 1884. The old Tollbooth Wind. That was 1820. It's really nice. The people's story. 
interesting building. Here's a sugar house close. Lots of coffee shops. And look at these old buildings. And all the Latin written on the sides. That was like an old church. Museum of Edinburgh. Bakehouse Close. Sixteen eighty eight, King James the seventh. Uh, Is it? Uh, it's hard to read it out there. What's in here? Neat old building in there. And you see there's these little courts everywhere darting in between. There's an old monument of some sort. Lots of coffee places. Now what I'm doing is I'm walking on towards the palace. So we'll Hollywood Palace, we're gonna look at that and then we'll make our way back up towards towards the uh, castle. We're gonna try to be there for 12 o'clock, so we have lots of time. Close, close. Here's another souvenir shop. So lots of souvenir shops, lots of coffee shops. So obviously they very highly cater towards tourism. Now we don't get to go into the hostel till 3 p.m. today. So I figure if we do the castle from 12 to 1.30 to get something to eat for lunch and then we'll head into the hostel. Recharge the batteries. Might need a snooze for a bit. See how it goes. I feel fine right now. The coffee's kicking in. You know, like I said, I haven't slept in a day. So here's an interesting old building, Whiteford House. Oh, delicious Scottish agros. I've heard about this. It's supposed to be really good. Scottish Parliament. Yeah, they have a memorial for Scottish veterans, right. residents. There's a little monument you see there, plaque in the wall there. It looks like graves in the back. My buddy Tim from Canada, he was in the uh, one of the Highland regiments before he joined full time and went into the to commando with me, but he made a career out of it. He had a very interesting career. Um, retired, 
He was a master warrant officer, a sniper, a pathfinder and all that. And then, then he went on to become uh, in the police force and the SWAT team. And he was the head of the security for the premier of Alberta. And then he's retired off that. Now he started his third career afterwards. He started a parachute uh, uh, for civilians, skydiving uh, company. He's always busy. Plus he took up, uh, he's, he's taken up um, sailing. So he, he doesn't keep idle himself. So here's the other part of the Scottish Parliament front part. And there in the back, right there, the mountain, that's Arthur's chair. So it's a fair old climb up there if you get, but suppose he has great views. So that might be an option for tomorrow depending on what the weather is like. So now we're just gonna cross over. Queen's Gallery, Palace Shop. Now this is the Queen's residence before she passed away obviously. And she would actually come here for one week a year. So during that one week, the palace would be shut, but the guards, the Queen's guards would be walking up and down the high street, the, the Mile High Street um, every day and that, so there was an attraction. So you can go in here. There is a paid entrance to it. Uh, I'm not gonna do it because it's a very royalty thing and stuff like that. It wouldn't be my cup of tea. I'm more interested in the castle myself, but it, it is there and we're gonna try to get a peek through the gate so you can see what it's like. Yeah, and that's basically the start or of the, uh, the Royal Mile. See that, that's another, you can see the fountain in the middle. That would be the residence. I don't know if the king uses it now, but this is where you would start off, I guess, on the uh, Royal Mile and then walk up. So it's a little bit over a mile, but it's basically a mile walking up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn it off until we get to the part where I haven't shown you yet, and then we'll make our way up towards the castle. In the meantime, we're going to try to look to see if I can find the pastry shop with the... Um, the Scottish pies or the uh, this one pie I seen on uh, one of the uh, YouTube videos it was uh, a macaroni and cheese pie and they, they said it was lovely so we'll give that a shot here's a little close just off the street from the castle uh, the the house Hollywood house palace I just saw this this is look at this little quaint little area Wow, very interesting. And that leads you right to the <laughs> This is a very popular tea room. Supposedly it's booked out. I don't want a tea right now, but it's right on the Royal Mile, so not far up from the uh, Hollywood uh, House Palace there. Right beside Reed's Court. It's a nice little building. Okay, walking back up, you're not too far from uh, the palace on the right hand side after the tea house. You come to Dunbar's Close Garden. It says, open to the public. So, let's take a look what it looks like. It's a soft beaten deck, looks nice. And here's the garden. Oh, wow, it's nice. Very nice. Oh, and there's more. Okay, like 
dry bubble trees. Hello. Hello. Hey. Oh wow, look at this, it keeps going on. And you can go in here too. Let's sneak. They got the right idea. <laughs> I'm trying to find a pie place. They, I seen they had a pie uh, shop somewhere on the, near the mile and they have um, macaroni and cheese pie. Supposedly it's really good. It's where they have normal the Scottish pies and stuff. But We're tourists ourselves. Yeah, but you haven't seen it. for a couple of days, but I, I haven't come across it. Where are you from? Belgium. Belgium. So I thought it was, I was going to say French because you have that French twang, but yeah. Belgium makes sense too. Yeah, yeah. But Belgium, yeah. You, you can speak German, French, but A bit Swiss. of German, a bit of French, English, yeah. Spanish, because I'm half Spanish. Oh, yeah. And you're from the States? No. No? Ireland, but I'm originally from Canada. Ah, okay. So I speak a bit of French and I, I did the Camino last year, so I do speak a bit of Spanish too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Camino was lovely. Yeah. Have you ever done that? I've been to Santiago de Compostela, but... Uh, I got to do the Camino. It's yeah. just so peaceful. Yeah, yeah. I did it from Lyon to Santiago, 315 kilometers. I have three more years left before I retire. And then I said, I'm going to do the full thing. I'm going to go from Saint-Jean all the way and take my time and just... How many kilometers a day do you walk? Um, I did about 22 to... I did a couple of days, I did 34, but 34 was too much. But if when I do it, I, when I'm 60, I'm going to take my time. I'm going to do like maybe 18 a day. Just take it easy and enjoy it. Mm. Not rush and enjoy it. Like. So whereabouts in Canada? We've been twice. Oh, Montreal. Montreal. Yeah. So you speak French as well? Yeah. Then? Yeah, yeah. yeah, I'm learning. I'm going to Nepal in September. So I'm trying to learn uh, Nepali right now. I, I start, I've been doing it for a year and it's very hard. It's very hard, but I, I think I'll be okay to have some basic conversation. Mm -hmm. But I'm going with a guide, and we're going up to Langtang Trek for about eight days. And then afterwards, he said he's going to come take me. We're going to go to his home village. It's about yeah. one day drive. I looked on the map. It's in the middle of nowhere. But he's, his parents are looking forward to having me there. I'm gonna sp he's going to show me where school he went to and... The uh, monasteries they have, or the the, Ooh, the yeah. temples, and wow. spend three days and then drive back. Yeah, so that's that's interesting. Yeah, because I want to be with the culture and yeah. experience, and not hotels yeah. and stuff. So, yeah, but this is a beautiful. This is the first time I'm here. Yeah, it, it, yeah. Awesome. it was a stopover for us to the Faroe Islands. Oh yeah. Yeah. So the Faroe Islands are interesting. I I've I seen a, a YouTube documentary on that, mm. and they're sort of like. And a world of our own. They're like they're Scottish, but they're also like Icelandic almost. Yeah, yeah, it's, uh, yeah. It's yeah. That they're, 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 if you have to compare them to to something, you'd say the Shetland Islands. Yeah, but they're in their own way completely different. Yeah, because I know there's controversy with the uh, their hunting of what is it? Uh, kind of dolphin. Dolphin whale. is yeah. yeah, whale. I think it is. Yeah, we didn't see any any of it. No, but they say that it only happens like maybe twice a year or something. It's becoming more of a, a traditional thing, not not, not, not on a they big don't scale need it, anymore, yeah. yeah. They also eat puffins. Oh, yeah. But not not anymore. Not they anymore. ate they ate puffins. Yeah. yeah. And where where in uh, in Ireland? Wexford. Wexford. Uh, yeah. Southeast. Yeah. yeah. I've only been to Dublin. I don't like Dublin. <laughs> Dublin's it, not it, that. It, it, it's just too busy, too expensive, uh, too fast paced. Whereas you go to the rest of Ireland and that, you go to even the other cities, like go to Cork and that, it's a big city, but they're just more laid back, you yeah. know? It's not. An, awesome alco busy. an alcohol problem, I thought. They have a, an alcohol problem in Dublin. Or is that all over? That's Ireland? all over Ireland, but they just drink too fast. Because <laughs> they, they're the pub shot at a certain time. Whereas in Montreal, they drink just as much as the Irish, but they don't have a problem. Like the, the Irish have to hammer it back in because the, the pubs close at 11.30 or 12.30 and that's it. 
Whereas in Montreal, I, th I think they close at 4.30 in the morning yeah. and then they open up at six. So it's not really, you don't, you don't rush. Like we would, we would go uh, out to the, to the bars. We'd only leave our house around midnight. You yeah, know, yeah. like you'd, ha you'd have a and dinner at home, yeah, friends and well, wine yeah. and that. And then you'd go out for a couple and yeah. take it. By then the Irish are already proof. <laughs> <laughs> Well, nice talking to you. Just a last question. Yeah. How, how about your ancestry? Do you know where you're from? Oh yeah, my mom's from Belfast. And my father was, uh, he his family came over from the potato famine. Oh, okay. From, um, they in, said, in Waterford or um, Kilkenny. Oh, so you're, you're Irish in, in, yeah. in uh, yeah. And is that why you went back? To yeah, because I had a passport and I, I hated the weather in Canada. And I was... I've been in the army when I was young. I've been to every single province, every territory. I've been to 30 states. So I, I've done your uh, North America. And I said, I wanted to use, and then I, I came, I, I was hitting 40 and I said, no, I'm gonna go to Ireland, I have my passport. And I uh, came here and it's just a, a more easy pace. It's not as stressful, you know. It's expensive, but you know. Yeah. Although we, we found, um we went to British Columbia, you know that. Ah, BC is nice, but it's yeah. expensive there. It's ex it's expensive, yeah. yeah. But it is. You know, we we had, of course, in the summer we had lovely weather. It is beautiful. And the scenery is amazing. Yeah. And well, Canada Canadians, has what Canadians a Canadians seem more laid back than they Americans, are. though. Yeah, they are. But uh, you know, I was working sixty hours a week, mm. and in the winter time, you'd have to factor in an extra hour in the morning to shovel, to get out. And be at work on time and then when you get home you have another hour so it makes for long days and yeah. tires for the cars clothes for you in the summertime it's the other way around <laughs> of course ireland it's 10 degrees all year round you get used to it you get wet maybe that's it yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nice meeting enjoy you your trip, enjoy yeah. it's a beautiful garden though eh? There's another little bar, but it's not all done up, but there's a litter bin basket there. Some more picnic benches. So this is really neat. Make sure you put your litter away. These are some nice. It's a lovely garden. Like I said, I just popped into that. I, I didn't even know I was gonna find it there. So. Definitely worth the walk around, eh? Now we'll just make our way back out to the main street. One side off this square we just came in, there's a modeled 1832 cast in bronze, 1883. Alexander and I can't pronounce that. Boshabinus Bo or maybe, I don't know. Maybe you can help me out with that. Sent it by, to the city by the subscribers in 1884. So it's probably the newspaper publication. Here's the city chambers. And then we're outside. We we're just there. Jeez, that name is puzzling me. Bosephanus. Hmm. I don't think it's a Scottish name. I'm a little closer to the castle. You can sort of see it at the end there, but here in front there's another monument. And then at the, we're at the cathedral, St. Giles Cathedral. So we'll go inside there. I just wanted to take a look at this one first. The sun out of my way, so. There's a cathedral right behind it. Here's the high court judiciary and somebody's put a cone on the uh, statue there. Hmm. 
and then there's keeps going down here. There's the castle, and there's another old building. Up to the top here. I believe that's the castle right up ahead. Here's the free St. Columbia's Free Church. There's cobblestones that go down and then around. And up to the castle, so I won't go up that way yet because it's too early. To go up there, and I don't think they would have what I'm looking for. I'm trying to find the pies. Let's see what we get. Here's an interesting place. A lot of the places I noticed they had ads looking for staff. And here's the back part of the castle. You see the cliff on this side? So it's basically up on a top of a cliff all surrounded. So it's really nice. Like I said, on the other side of the, we saw it from uh, this, the other monument, Scott's Monument, you can see across on the other side of it. This is the back end of it. Please. And look. Look at that's a working school. See how they have seatings in there that's for when they have the uh, military tattoo it's in August so if you want to come in August time and then you see the guards display the tattoo it's really really interesting I've seen it myself back in Canada when I was in the army Castle Rock Hostel this would be an, an interesting hostel eh? right in front of it there we go 